and gentlemen, welcome back to Ross Taylor Woodworks. Uh, this time I've got an old train station bench. Uh, the customer told me this, this came from a train station in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. I believe it's uh, birch. You see here, it looks like it's birch, it's all worn off. Uh, the finish is pretty well far gone on this. So I'm going to uh, do a complete refinish on this. Um, there's no repairs to do. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can uh, get it disassembled. Uh, I was taking a quick look. Um, I think I can get it uh, disassembled. Uh, something big and awkward like this is always easier to disassemble if possible. And work on the uh, subcomponents. Uh, much easier to strip all the uh, subcomponents. Uh, and then reassemble it later and then restain it. First I got to do a thorough wiping down. Uh, it's covered in mildew and mold uh, all over the bench. So before I can even handle it uh, and try to get it apart, I'm gonna have to give it a thorough wiping down. All right, the bench has this uh, decorative uh, top rail. It's just held on with some screws. There's some round-headed screws all the way around here, so I'm just gonna take those out. And this top rail should just come right off. And also there's some trim strips along the edge. I'm just gonna take those off. When this bench was originally made, they uh, finished the rail separately, so the original finish is underneath that rail, and you can see the original color. Now on the underside, uh, there's some cleats along the seat bottom. Uh, there's two screws going up into the seat and two going into the side panel. I'm going to take the screws out of going into the side panel. And then I'm just going to pop out a couple of glue blocks. Alright, it took a little bit of uh, fiddling. Um, I finally got the uh, one side off. Uh, this one rail is uh, splined into the side so that's separated right here which is not a big deal now what's unusual there's an inner and an outer back this is the seat back right here and this is the back panel of the bench so there's a space in between and there was a few nails holding a glue block in uh, that's split but I can uh, glue that back together uh, the front rail was glued in with a bornis and tenon just soaked out with some alcohol and a few minutes later that just uh, separated. So I'm going to get the other side uh, separated. I got that soaking with alcohol. Now it's probably going to separate right here along this uh, style. But that's fine. Um, if it stays attached to this I can still work with it and then just re-glue these joints when I put the bench back together. This side separated from the splines. Now I've got all the parts done in the finishing room. I'm going to start the stripping. Now I previously tested the finish and it's a shellac finish. 
which will be very easy to get off. In this case, I'm just going to go straight to uh, some lacquer thinner. Just going to start scrubbing it with lacquer thinner. I can skip the uh, citrus strip. Uh, there's no point in uh, using the citrus strip. It'll just take longer to do. And it's just a matter of uh, loosening up the shellac with the lacquer thinner. I have to uh, scrub it three or four times. And it'll come nice and clean. And you can see the advantage of uh, disassembling the bench, getting all these parts laid out flat, so it's make it makes it much easier to strip all the parts. And underneath that uh, old shellac, you can see the original color. On the side panels, I've got those laid out now. I decided to uh, pop off these uh, cap pieces. Uh, they were loose anyway, so I just uh, pop those off. Actually make it easier to clean up the sides. Now after getting all the parts stripped, I'm going to go back and uh, get any little uh, crusty spots in the corners. I'm just going to wet it down with lacquer thinner again. And use a little uh, wire brush. Uh, clean up all the uh, corners. Sometimes there's some crusty spots in the corners. Now I've got all the parts back up in the shop. I let it uh, dry for a few days. Uh, I'm going to pull all the nails out. Uh, pull them out from the back side. Now I'm taking some coarse sandpaper and cleaning up any glue that's in the grooves. Now on the finished surfaces, I'm just going to go over it with some 220 paper, just to lightly clean up the surface. I don't want to go through the stain. Uh, the original stain is still in the wood. I was very fortunate that the original stain didn't come out of the wood. So I just want to lightly clean up the surface of the wood. And use the cabinet scraper as needed just to uh, scrape out any corners that uh, didn't get cleaned up. Uh, I was looking at this a little closer and I'm going to just leave the uh, bench uh, with this wear in it. Uh, the stain is all worn off in the middle here. There's some stain uh, still on the edges here. Uh, I was originally thinking I might uh, sand this and restain it to uh, blend in with the rest of the bench. Uh, but I think it's going to leave this uh, wear. I think it looks really nice. And leave the, uh, there's a little bit of stain on the edges here still. So I'm just going to hit it with the uh, 220 very lightly and then uh, I'm just going to leave the wear. I think it'll uh, look nice. Uh, the arms are worn too, so I'm just going to leave that wear as well. Taking a little bit of alcohol and uh, wetting it. And you can see the original color come up and that uh, nice wear. So I'm just going to leave that.
right, I've uh, got it back down in the finishing room. Uh, I've since got two coats of shellac on it. Uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, it's coming up to a really nice color. Uh, it is the original color. And even the seat looks great with that wear on it. That's going to blend in nicely. Now it's nice and smooth. I don't really have to do any kind of scuff sanding or anything. I'm just going to hit it lightly with the maroon pad before the next coats. And I have to fill in the nail holes and then do a little touch up if necessary. And over here I've got the top rail. I'm finishing that separately. That's the way it was done originally. That was finished separately and then installed. If you recall, the original finish was underneath the rail. Now I'm going to use some soft putty to fill the nail holes. This is just an oil-based putty that uh, it's very easy to rub into the holes. Then use a little bit of naphtha to wipe off the excess. Uh, this can be found at any hardware store. Right after doing the touch-ups, a uh, quick tack. Now I'm putting on the final coats of shellac. And for something like this, I try to figure out a sequence of how I'm going to brush on the shellac. In this case, I'm doing the insides of the side panels first. Then go along the top rail. Then move to the seat back. Then go to the seat bottom. Then the outsides of the end panels. And then the uh, back panel. Uh, this piece is a little bit unusual that the back panel is finished. Typically on an antique, the back panel would not be finished. Then finally, do the decorative top rail. Uh, the procedure I came up with for this is just to flood it with shellac to make sure all the corners are covered. And then follow up with a dry brush as it's drying to clean up any runs or drips. All right, I got the final coat of shellac on. I let it uh, dry for a couple days. Ended up doing uh, five coats. Uh, it came out very, very smooth, so I don't have to do any kind of scuff sanding or steel wooling. I'm just going to go straight to uh, rubbing it with uh, steel wool and wax. So I got my mahogany wax right there. I poured a little bit of naphtha into the wax to make it more workable and uh, extend the working time and make it easier to rub out. All right, now I've got it back up in the shop. 
And we'll put the top rail on. I've got it uh, marked for which direction goes forward. Now I'm just going to put the uh, screws back in. I end up doing a little bit of an oops here. I had uh, trouble getting the, net, the screws started, and I was trying to figure out why. And I realized that I nailed the top rail in through the screw holes. So the nails are blocking the screws. So just a simple solution here was to set the nails down a little bit deeper so that they clear the screws. The actual nail holes were off to the side a little bit. It was an easy mistake. Now this uh, piece has some unusual feet. At first I thought these were uh, porcelain, but they're actually a cast iron with an enamel. I took them off to clean them, and they just have a screw that goes in the side. And since the bottom of the feet are kind of rough, I'm going to add some nylon pads to the bottom. And even after screwing the uh, feet in place, they were still a little bit loose, so I just put a couple little pine wedges to tighten up the feet. All right, uh, this is all done. Not a uh, terribly difficult uh, refinishing. Uh, there was no major repairs. Uh, the only thing I ended up doing was uh, disassembling the whole bench. Uh, it made it much easier to uh, strip the parts uh, laying out flat rather than trying to get into all these corners. If this was uh, left assembled, it would be difficult to get into all these corners and get it nice and clean. So it made it much easier to get it clean, uh, laying all the parts out flat. I can very easily uh, just take the finish right off. And then a little bit of work to get it back together. And then uh, just a light sanding and then uh, a shellac finish. Now this was a shellac finish originally, which I did make it very easy to uh, strip it off. So I just simply uh, dissolved with the lacquer thinner. And fortunately, uh, the original uh, stain uh, did not dissolve in the lacquer thinner, which was fortunate. Uh, so this is the original color. Now if you recall, when I took it apart, the original uh, color was underneath the rail here. It was finished first and then this rail was put on, so that preserved the original finish under the, the uh, rail here. So this is the exact uh, color, it was just a simple matter of uh, re shellacking and the original color came right back. Now the uh, seat was a little bit worn in the middle here, it was all worn off in the middle. And the armrests were worn. Now, I was originally thinking of uh, sanding and restaining the seat, but I think I made the right decision here in leaving it worn. Uh, there's some nice uh, marks here on the front, a little burn mark, and you can see a little bit of the finish in the corners here, and the armrests are worn. And that just all kind of blended right in with the new shellac. That was the right call there, uh, leaving that wear, and it preserved some of the history of the piece. So this came out uh, looking really, really nice.